recording now. Oops. Oh, should I just finish my story? Yeah. Okay. We'll tell it from the top. Oh, okay. So I was watching Kelly Clarkson. Right. And she was talking to somebody about uh, there's going to be a lot of babies and divorces coming from this coronavirus thing. Ha, 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 ha. And then I was like, she's getting divorced. You just heard that. Yeah. And I'm like. No, she's not getting divorced. I mean, she's always talking about her husband's so amazing and they have a great marriage. So I don't, I'm like, why would I say that? And then today I look, she's getting divorced. It was on Twitter, all over Twitter. Gotta believe what's on Twitter. (laughs) And then my niece was coming over to drop off my, her daughter and I was just chilling, and all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I should see if she wants some coffee mugs, because I have an abundance of coffee mugs, if anybody needs any. And I'm like, this is, that was random. Like, why did I just pick that out out of everything that's right. in my house? And so she comes over, and right when I open the door, she has a broken coffee mug in her hand. Oh, that's so weird. <laughs> She's like, yeah, Ellen broke my brand new coffee mug. And I was like... That is crazy. So I told her, I'm like, I wonder if I misunderstood the message. Right. They were trying to tell, like, show me that that was going to happen. Right. Instead of, instead I was like, oh, does she need coffee mugs? And she's like, I have plenty of coffee mugs. I'm just down one now. But did you already finish? Almost. I No wonder I didn't turn that on earlier. I, I literally just dribbled Distracted. my mango michelada. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you kind of slop, slopped it back. Did I? I went... <laughs> It takes me a while to oh drink a tall boy. I, I think I drank too much before. I, I want to cover two things. One of them is um, I want to acknowledge mm-hmm. the fact that on the last episode, mm-hmm. we talked at length about what happened with George Floyd. Yeah. And when we reached the end of our episode, we both decided mutually mm-hmm. that we were just going to cut it out because, you know, we just felt on top of the stuff that we were already talking about in the episode, it felt incongruent and it just was like, it just felt weird. So then I was editing the episode and I was like, this isn't so bad. Mm-hmm. So I spent the whole Monday editing and at two o'clock in the morning, I was still editing and I decided to scrap it at the last minute because mm-hmm. I started listening to it from beginning to end. And I mean, we literally went from talking about that into talking about st- other stuff yeah. that just didn't seem to just like it, it just it didn't fit. Number one. Right. Right. And cook up. Across, I mean, to me, it could come across insensitive rather than, right. I mean, we're just, we want to be an escaped also, but we also, we do talk about deep things right. with each other here. We let people in our, our conversation. And so there's, it's like, there's a time and place right, right now. There's kind of like an abundance of talk about this and like you and I were discussing I'm white and I feel like I really don't deserve an opinion (laughs) about it you know what I mean like I feel like I I just I can't say I know how somebody in that situation feels but I would much rather say how can I help support right people and and my kids have been extremely supportive and helping and I you know I believe that everybody's entitled to their opinion can I just say my my PSA about something sure. on this subject or on all subjects this that are sensitive that whether it's politics religion or this happens to cover to me right. just about everything you know my daughter posted something and I didn't agree with all of it but I raised my kids to be free thinkers. Right. I took them to the polls with me, but I they would say, who'd you vote for, mommy? And I would say, I'll tell you in the end, but, you know, we're going to go over it. And you guys, I want you to form your own opinion. And so right. many kids are thought to think like their parents, right. vote like their parents, you know, right. believe what their parents believe. I don't want my kids to mimic me. I want them to have their own opinions about right. things and form their own. So anyway, so she wrote out this thing and clearly she was going to get a lashing from certain people. It was very brave of her to post it. So I I said, you know, first of all, I'm very proud of you for for being strong and brave for for voicing your words about this subject this everybody's so like on Mm -hmm. edge about and rightfully so and so I said um you know I kind of was just giving her another angle to think about because we do have family and stuff that's 
on one side and, you know, but I also, we are firm believers on the other side. You know what I mean? Right. It's like. You're walking, you're trying to walk that line and give the respect, but at the same time, right. it's like. Right. And I mean, and, and then this process of, of like the kids trying to support Black Lives Matter and all of that, I'm hearing like feelings are hurt and they, they feel disrespected. And I'm like, that's not, it's not what they're doing and it's not what that that's about. And so I, I just kind of was like. Um, you know, be cognizant of your wording when right. you are saying things, whether it's verbally, which I, even you and I have discussed things and I'm like, oh, I'm so glad you trashed that because I later thought about it and it, it didn't sound right. Or, you know what I mean? Because I later think, because when we're on the cuff and we're just, pa- I'm right. very passionate when I start talking about something. So anyway, I told her, um, I just was, I'm, I'm so proud that you have these words and these feelings and that you're not afraid to express them. Right. And at the same time, I want you to see this other side of things and, right. and just kind of like, you know, do your research and my kids are really good about doing the research, but, but do your research and think about like, it's, it's about reform at the top. Right. Because like this officer can't fire this officer right. and even if he disagrees like you've seen officers marching with right. people they they disagree with it it they can't they're kind of power as a powerless as the citizen is at that point so right. so you can't blame them but you can blame higher and so i was trying to explain that to her like that's where the you reform, can blame the system itself the system itself systematic right bias and so i that's what i was trying to explain to her and then at the end I was like, you know, this is, this is how we learn. This is how we respect each other. And this is how, like, I, in this whole process, have learned a lot. As and like we were talking uh-huh. about, I have learned a lot too. Right. Just in the last couple of weeks. And I think that's, that's the thing is, the whole reason I scrapped it is, I feel like we just need to just shut the fuck up and listen. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I At believe. the end of the day, we need to just listen to and what's support. going on and support and just ask, like, how how can we help right. and learn? There's a lot of hard conversations that are just happening, like, in people's households, yes. on Facebook, on TikTok, on Twitter. Yep. There it's are, like, so a lot of impressive. reflections going on. And not only that, because my kids have taken part in the marches. Mm-hmm. And my personal thing right now is the whole COVID thing. Right. So I don't. Like, I'm proud of them that they've yeah. been out there. But at the same time, I'm like, be careful. Well, that's the one thing I'm really glad my kids have not gone out there to march. Right. But they're just FYI to everybody. There are other ways, if you so choose, to support and kind of um, participate in those things. And we'd like to give going... you guys some links to that. Yeah, my kids, I'll, I'll get you the links so okay. that you can put them up because my kids are constantly putting things up that are in support. And some of it, like even right now, Postmates are one of them are even uh, free deliveries to uh, black owned businesses. So br- restaurants and stuff. So they're not charging a delivery fee and they're kind of giving you like a list of those businesses that's right. supporting. That's like, but anyway, so I, I was just telling her like the best and kind of telling everybody who was reading it is exactly that. Like, this is a good time to, to learn and to respectfully listen to each other. And whether it's this or about politics or whatever it might be, rather than like losing family members and friends because you don't agree. Why don't we respectfully disagree with each other? Cause nobody, you don't have to have the same opinion as everybody. Well, I draw the line on some things though. Uh, um, if if you're an actual yeah. racist and you're spewing very racist things, I'm going to delete you off of Facebook. And I, I have, have a this problem. week. I have a problem with that also. So I, I hear you with that too. Right. But if it's just like there are people who don't want to hear anything, right. they believe what they, they close believe. Down, they shut yeah. down. I mean, I have family, <laughs> one in particular that is very hard headed <laughs> and does not want to. I mean, to me, all the news is coming off of Facebook, and, and my son is so good about um, giving her information, proper information. Like, no, I'm sorry, that's not right. Like, <laughs> she, uh, there was a picture of a battered woman and saying like something about the cop, or I don't know what it was, and she's like, he said that's not even the right person. Right. The they put that photo with the wrong person. So I like that he respectfully gives her the information, but whether or not she inhales it. Right. That's but whoever choice. sees that post is going to see that as right. well. So, 
But there That's are and bunches of people that don't want to 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 learn they want their side and their side over. but that doesn't that shouldn't stop us this that's what i think this movement is really bringing mm-hmm. out is that it shouldn't stop us from correcting what we see people saying incorrectly or whatever we need to speak yeah. up yes we need to speak up if you see something like this girl in the gross in the i think it was like a circle k here close by if yeah. you see something pull out your phone it and record it do you know the girl that that recorded this whole incident was only 17 years old yeah, i remember we were talking about that no i didn't know she was 17 oh you said she was young <laughs> but yes she, i just saw her today for the first time i mean there's so many like things out there that's going back and forth so many arguments like it's yeah. it's easy to mud- muddy the waters yeah but at the end of the day black lives matter and that's what we need to take away from this mm-hmm. and I'm going to leave it at that. Yeah. We just wanted to... We're, that we're not ignoring the situation. We're not. we're not. blind to it. But we also want to have fun on our podcast and right. let this be a little escape from coronavirus and protests and right. all that other fun stuff that's going out in the world. There's too much icky happening right now. Right. So why don't we like... Have a fun podcast. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about fun stuff. Yeah, no, like I'm murder re- and yeah. um, ghosts. <laughs> oh, wow. Woo-hoo. So not fun stuff. Yeah. Uh, Lori Vallow. And oh, Chad my Bell gosh. This okay. week. Yeah. yeah. So they found bodies in his backyard. They found No surprise. Them. And one of them has been... No, they they did both oh, now. Oh, now it's. I think it was last night. I was going to text you and oh, tell you, like, did you see this? So both of both of the kids. As far as I confirmed. know, that's what the news I was watching last night said. Right. Okay, <laughs> I know, right? It changes <laughs> yeah. every day. Yeah. Oh, it's so sad. Yeah. That is so sad. So sad. Like, how can you do that to your own? Did we finish? They found the body of the kids in Chad's backyard, backyard. and so they've arrested him. Finally, but but not for murder. Right. Because so. obviously they don't know, like, who did it. Right. Yeah. But I mean, it's pretty damn suspect if somebody's buried. In Listen. Back. They were in Hawaii, having like, a having time. a good old time. All right. Let's just leave it at that because I know we're going to revisit this. We're going to do a whole nother episode just yes, on this let's after do it. things have, like, completely settled with and the case. And a good chit chat about it. Yeah. Because I'm yeah. sure a lot of the other stuff is going to come out. So Good idea. But I just wanted to give everybody an update on that as well. All righty. So sad. But I'm super happy that they finally found yeah. them because now they can go forward. Right. And the grandparents so sad. of JJ can have closure. And uh, But I did say that they were. Yeah, you did. You did. <laughs> so that'll be on our next, uh, not the next episode, <laughs> but once all of this settles with the case. Yeah. Because, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. there's going to be a lot of stuff that probably comes out before. Probably. I think it's all going to go quite done. fast now. Yeah. Okay. All right. And go. And go. So you have the true crime. Oh, am I going first then? Yes. <gasps> what? <laughs> okay, you guys, I had to call Alma because I was going down so many crazy rabbit holes trying to find a story. I got, oh, I got so educated this week, though. On like everything, so, right? Yeah, on all kinds <laughs> on so of stuff. so many levels. Yeah, like it was a very educational week. I mean, I had all this political stuff and, and right and wrong things and... Then I had um, even family things when I was doing our research. And um, anyway, then I learned about the West and what I didn't know was going on here. And it's crazy. Lots of stuff. And I, I did. It's like, oh, my God, I want to do so many more stories. It's very exciting. All right. But I found a good one. Did you? Yeah. And actually, I went to. <laughs> Thank you. I love my hook. <laughs> She's um, all trying to scratch her back with a pin. Oh yeah. Oh, I can massage me. Um <laughs> people always think this is something yeah. other than what it is. I love finding pressure points and then they like end up in your jaw mm-hmm. or like down your arm. So delicious. All right. Anyway, I was going to do Ruby, Arizona. Mm-hmm. But that just didn't really have enough. Like it has, it's exciting. It has to be meaty. Yeah, it wasn't meaty enough. It's a pretty violent history in right. Ruby, Arizona, but that's why I said I was going to have a short one. Okay. But I, I'm not going to have a short. Oh. <laughs> it's not super long, but it's um, it's pretty interesting. You ready for me? I'm ready for I you. Be- I better take a drink. <sighs> All right, get all comfy here. Mine is on Levi Boone Helm. Have you heard of him? No. 
I didn't think so. Hmm. Yeah. I wanted to find, like, what serial killers were in the Old West back in the day. You know, there had to be more right. than, like, just the shooters, you know. Right. Which I learned a lot about that stuff. Doc Holliday. I learned stuff about him. Really? So interesting. Yeah. Okay. See what I mean? I was going down a whole lot of rabbit holes. Okay. <laughs> Get out of Carlene's head. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Levi Boone Helm is also known as Kentucky Cannibal. Can't say I've heard that one. No, but uh, I mean, his name says it all. Of course, I have to do a story on it. Yeah. (laughs) He was born January 28th, 1828. He's an Aquarius. Oh. Yeah, 1828. That's how far back we're going. Back in the Western days. Way back west. Yeah, he didn't start out here, but he came out this way. Okay, I'm, I'm pretty much going to read Like everybody it. else yeah, back I mean, then, right? Well, yeah, I mean, like, he started out uh, in, well, he was born in Kentucky, and then when he was a boy, when he was a little boy, he moved, his family moved to Missouri to kind of give him, like, a, a more rounded upbringing, like, to, um, what did it say? It said that he was uh, brought up uh, on the borderland between civilization and, so- and the salvage frontier. Hmm. Yeah, like, I think he that, had... That sounds so weird, between right? civilization... And the salvage. <laughs> What's the salvage frontier? I think it's like, to they went they were like, somewhere in Missouri where he could kind of still get the, the refined, like, because I, I feel like they were kind of well-to-do, and, um, but he still could learn how to, to rough it and, like, survive in the wilderness and stuff, which comes in handy through his story. Hmm. Well, too handy. Yeah, okay, well. <laughs> anyway, um, he would often challenge... Uh, oh, so I guess the pictures didn't make him look like he was a very big guy, but I guess he kind of was his his body type. He must have been kind of muscular. Okay. You know how you can see a guy with his clothes on and he doesn't look that, but he takes off his shirt and you're like, damn. Hello. Yeah. I'm assuming that's kind of what he was like because they say he was kind of intimidating in stature, you know, just kind of. Anyway, so he liked to show his like strength and agility and he would (laughs) throw his bowing knife and he would throw it into the ground and then he would while galloping on his horse, mm-hmm. reach down and grab it in a full gallop, which clearly isn't an easy thing to do. No. Anyway, so he, he liked to do that, be a show off. Um, he definitely challenged authority. So one of the stories is the sheriff was making an attempt to arrest him. And so he got on his horse and while riding horseback, he went up the, the stairs to the courthouse and into the courtroom, and while circuit court was in session, he verbally taunted the judge. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So the sheriff's trying to, I can just visualize, they could do a movie on this guy. I don't know if, oh wait, I think they did. It's called Boone, and it's coming out on Prime in a couple months. Oh. Because I wanted to watch it, and I'll I'm like, where is it? it? Where is it? Yeah. Anyway, because this would make a good movie. It's just so bizarre. But I could picture the chaos of, like, this guy galloping his horse in, the sheriff trying to get him, and then whatever. I mean, he's just, he's a nuisance. It sounds like it. Yeah. Um, he married, okay. So he got married to a 17-year-old girl named Lucinda Browning. How old was he? In 1848, so 28, 48, so what, 20? Okay. He was 20, she was 17. Well, okay. That's not uncommon back then. That's not that big of an age gap. That's actually a pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that's not bad. Um, But, uh, okay, so then they have a daughter, and then he turns out to be a piece of shit husband. He, mm. like, physically abuses her. He beats the shit out of her, basically, on a regular basis. Um. He's a major alcoholic, so he's drinking a lot. He rides his... What is him and riding a horse inside? He rides his horse inside the house and then what? and then beats the shit out of his wife. I don't... I mean, that's what I mean. I think they had some money. Oh, well, I think they did have some money because she... Um, Who rides a horse inside the house? I mean, they literally take a crap wherever they're at. I know. That's probably the part of part of her problem was like what are you doing you asshole 
And he was, but I mean, he's so eccentric and so just like off his rocker. It's not even funny. That It sounds like it. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, it says that domestic violence got so bad that Lucinda finally filed for divorce. Well, in 1848, to file for divorce, a woman to file for divorce, that's not a common thing. They usually just had to stay right. married. Anyway, she actually, his dad, they, they call him Boone, so that's why I keep calling him Boone. But anyway, his dad actually is the one who paid for the divorce, and eventually it bankrupted him. Wow. Yeah, she. so it sounds like she must have cleaned him out. I don't know. She must have. She made some money. But it ruined the family name and reputation. So um, so now Boone has, like, disgraced his whole family. And he's like, you know what? I don't think he was just like, oh, I'm sorry for disgracing you guys. I'm going to move away now. Right. Um, I think probably his dad was like, you're a fucking loser and you've disgraced us and I'm bankrupt now. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye, Felicia. So he's heading out to California because now um, it's the 1850s. It's the big gold rush is happening. So cha-ching, right? Right. So he's like, I'm going to go to California. Wait till you hear his cousin's name. So he asks his cousin, Little Barry. Hmm? Little Barry, shoot. (laughs) That's his name. Little Barry Shoot. Little Barry. Little Barry, will you go uh, with me to California and get some gold? <laughs> so Little Barry's like, uh, sure. You know, I don't know if, um, I think he was probably afraid to say no because this guy's so crazy. Okay, what kind of name is Little Barry? Was that a nickname? Okay, well, here's, the, I think it is a nickname. and Because I, that sounds like a very Like a dingleberry? Demas- yeah. Well, a very dim. <laughs> emasculating like yeah. term like okay you got little little balls well um actually and i wish i would have gone back but it would have taken me so long and it just i didn't do it but when i was watching the doc holiday documentary that i was watching uh-huh. i had watched it before i started writing this and i'm pretty sure they mentioned the phrase or the name like little berry right uh, little berry little berry no little berry and what that um what that means because there was another phrase like doc holiday said something and they were explaining that like it was really common and it kind of meant make my day go ahead do it oh really yeah and this little berry i think was another way of calling somebody something or or saying something so i i wish kind of wish i would have gone back but it would have just taken me too long i'm gonna look it up while you're talking all right so little berry shoe first said he would go but then he backed out at like the last minute and was like i don't want to go with you to california so boone being the amazing stable man that he is got really pissed off and stabbed his cousin in the chest oh crap killing him instantly such a sweetheart i know (laughs) so he he apparently was going to to the west by himself (laughs) you think (laughs) yeah yeah but um, i mean he he sounds like a real charmer to be around i mean who wouldn't want to go on a long trip with him little barry's friends and his brother didn't didn't take his death very well right apparently and so they formed like their own little posse and went after boone they captured him oh my gosh see this is this guy has nine lives so they capture him okay it says but his antics land him in cat captivity what antics like he's just like he's so bizarre you know like riding a horse in the courthouse those kinds of things but now he's like so I'm assuming, like, now they've arrested him. He's go- He's probably in the jail waiting to be sentenced or whatever. And he's just, like, his antics just being bizarre. Aside from him sounding, like, really off the wall, but yeah. I was going to say, like, okay, he's an Aquarius. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's just creative. <laughs> he's just creative. <laughs> well, he marches to the beat of a different drum. <laughs> yeah, you know. I mean, don't judge. <laughs> Well, so instead of like keeping him in prison, they put him in this insane, excuse me, burpee. They, um, they put him in the insane asylum. Right. Like, oh, he's nutty. That's why he's like getting into all this trouble. I mean, and I'm pretty sure they, like they were looking at the past things too, but 
that's why he beats his wife and rides a horse in his house and because he's nutty. So um, he kind of, okay, so now he is, he's very charming apparently. Mm-hmm. And he has convinced the guards. So the guards take him, he's convinced them to take him for walks, which I don't think they're supposed to like let him out. Mm-hmm. But he, he has schmoozed them enough. They are, um, he, he schmoozed these guards to take him for walks and they take him for walks through the woods. What? So, yeah. And apparently at first when I read it, I thought it was just one guard, but apparently it's like, you know, the shifts of guards. So it's more than one. It's kind of all of them. So anyway. Let's all take a walk in the woods. Yeah. <laughs> I think just like he, they, they probably don't all realize that they're all taking, like different ones are taking him for walks oh, at different times. okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So anyway, after these walks become routine, um, he took advantage of the guard and I assume he befriended, right? He gains the trust of all these guards, we said. He just, um, basically, he goes, he gets the test, trust of the guards. He has the one or two or whoever takes him for a walk, and then he escapes. Okay. Which was his plan from the beginning. Right. He knows what he's doing. He's very um, calculated. Okay. Nothing he does, I don't think, is really... I think some of it's on the cuff, obviously. Like, he's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway he's crazy but he's calculated yeah some of his stuff is very premeditated and other stuff is just like he has a very bad temper okay and so he loses his shit very easily all right so boone was then able to continue on his adventure to the california um on his way uh, it said he murdered several men in various altercations, eventually committing premeditated murder. So at least some of those were premeditated. It, and they said like he's murdered like 40 to 50 people, but right. they can really only prove like 20 of them. 40 to 50? Yeah. That's a lot of people. Yeah. You know, because it's hard. Like back in those days, they have fingerprints and stuff. And so right. he could just be like having dinner at somebody's house and then decide he didn't like what they made. So he killed them. Ooh. Like, he, he's that ruthless. Okay. Yeah, that's a temper. Yeah. He's just crazy. Forced to flee once more. Okay. Because he's murdered. He's committed this premeditated one that we know of. We'll just go with that one. But okay. he's pr- there's been others. So he's committed several at this point, but the one premeditated. It's forced him to flee again. So, see, he keeps getting diverted from his, like... Going to California. Right. Going to California. Got to kill someone. Now I got to run. <laughs> Change of plans. Yep. So he's forced to avoid arrest and vigilante justice. Boone teams up with six men whom he ends up confiding into uh, telling them about his previous murders. Okay. Like, hey, guys, uh, you know, Did since com- we're bonding. Fight or he brags? I, I would call it bragging, but right. the story says confi- confiding. So whatever. He said this. This is a quote. Because um, he ends up writing a book. <laughs> it's a of course book. he did. Yeah. <laughs> Which um, I was watching. You know that? show shit what's the name of it where it's like on pbs or whatever and they do um people bring antique road show mm. so people were bringing in their stuff that they have on him like a, a card a playing card because he was a big gambler too like that's how he started making money for a while so he could stay afloat it was and like he, a card like baseball cards no, like, <laughs> yeah no uh i have playing card and then it had bullet holes in it because he would use that to like practice shooting i guess Mm -hmm. but then he would date and sign it like with an autograph oh those are worth he sounds like like a narcissist yes major and it's worth like five thousand dollars now like that that card the guy was asking antique road then they had oh because one of the things he did also was um moved cattle Mm -hmm. so they um had stuff that he had signed for that too and um so that's worth a couple thousand because it has signature on it yeah like he like he's that notorious i mean who knows that in the future their Mm -hmm. freaking signature is going to be worth something like he's so crazy he must have just thought 
I'm gonna. I'm the shit. Yeah, I kill people and I do it well. Like just start so. autographing <laughs> shit. Like, yeah, that's weird. There was something. Oh, and then the book. That book. There's you know a few copies out there, so that went for a, a couple thousand. And then there was uh, oh the the burial card. You know the card that has a picture of him dead. Mm-hmm. Oh okay. Yeah. yeah, that goes for quite a bit too. Did he sign that too? <laughs> <laughs> The lady actually made a joke. Made Did a joke she? about that. Oh. <laughs> yeah. This is making my mouth watery. Is it? At least you got at least you got uh water there. I feel like I need a straw. <laughs> <laughs> I already finished mine. Okay. Anyway. 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 He ends up confiding in these guys um about his past and then while he's confiding to these guys about the people that he's murdered he also tells them how he has eaten some of the people that he's murdered (laughs) i knew that nickname was going to come into play somewhere yeah he's eaten all or part of his murder victims yeah Nasty. Well, okay, so here's the quote. Minnie's the po- Minnie's the poor devil. I feel like I have to have an accent. <laughs> <laughs> the poor devil. Minnie's the poor devil. I've killed at our time and an, or another. I've killed at one time or another. Minnie's the poor devil. I've killed at one time or another. And the time has been that I've obliged and delighted to feed on some of them. <sighs> yep. He's really, he like, mmm. <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, he sounds like he's taking delight in it. Yeah, he like put some oomph in there, didn't he? Anyway, this boasting is the first report of cannibalism on the part of Levi Boone Hill. So you think you're just going to take a ride with a guy? Do you think he used like, salt? Oh. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, you think you're... I actually hadn't thought about it. <laughs> Maybe... <laughs> I've been working on Maybe this Maybe some lemon long. pepper. No. I have yeah. no idea. Tahin. Some Camino. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I for, completely forgot what I was going to say now. No, so you're riding along and you like meet up with this guy yeah. on the road and you're like, just join his company. And then he decides he doesn't like you, mm-hmm. so shoots he, your ass, and, then and has, has you, you for, for dinner. dinner. <laughs> That's. I got the munchies. Alrighty then. Yeah. I got the munchies. Can I eat those toes? Ew, not toes. <laughs> Gross. Anything but toes. With some toe jam and jelly. No. <laughs> if I was a cannibal, I would never touch toes. No. Or the manhole. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not that. Who wants the manhole? Not okay. I, said the fly. <laughs> Oh, my God. Uh, Okay, so he definitely rattled feathers, obviously. Uh, Once again, with some brutal murders, because he again is fleeing the vengeance of community, communities. Couldn't get that word out for a second there. (laughs) And is now headed... Up the coast, actually. Uh, oh, he's running from miners. So he's actually in the mining towns now, I guess. I'm okay. pissing all so of them So he's made off. it all the way to I'm assuming the so. west coast. I'm assuming so. Okay. Um, he well, went... I mean, there's some mining towns before you hit the west coast. But... Well, yeah. I mean, before California, because there was mining here. Right. In Texas. Colorado. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. So he seemed to have... Uh, kill some people and kind of make some miners mad okay and uh yeah so they were after him i mean you don't want to make miners mad they like carry (laughs) pickaxes yeah they're not exactly weaklings no i mean anyway um in 1853 it's recorded he has now found his way to oregon oh lucky oregon so maybe he's done with california could be i mean i feel like i skipped something but all right i guess california was a brief stint because he yeah he had his fill (laughs) i'm Uh, full (laughs) california was too spicy for him (laughs) (laughs) he likes a bland diet yeah you know he's gonna go get himself some hippies and uh i don't know (laughs) they didn't have hippies then (laughs) 
<laughs> anyway, it's um, it's here that he finds about six guys to travel with. Oh, another six guys. Okay. I mean, I wonder well, if he'll confide in them. Or have them for dinner. Oh, he's going to have them for dinner, sister. Oh, wow. All, All right. six guys? Oh, you just, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was like. Okay, so they tr- he, they travel with him. He travels with them, whatever, to Fort. They're going to Fort Hall, Idaho. Okay. Anyway, attending to go. See, I like just telling my story. Let me just tell my story. Anyway, they're going to go to Salt Lake City is their, I guess, their ultimate plan. Okay. However, an attack by Indians. So one of the stories I saw um, was that to take your cattle through certain territories with the Indians, there's like an agreement with the government that it can, they, people can travel peacefully through and there's like, a cost and so the indians were like it's 10 cents it's 10 cents a head so it was essentially going to cost them like 120 dollars. and he's like okay one of the stories is he just shot the the head guy to like then let the other indians go to go and tell like hey this guy's crazy and this is this is the message okay the other story was that he he actually gave the guy the money they actually decided that they were gonna he said okay hey Let's make it interesting because he likes to gamble, you know. So he's like, how about we draw a card? High card, it's double or nothing, right? So the Indian watches him shuffle the cards and then smart Indian is like, no, buddy. Takes the cards to make sure they're real Mm -hmm. after he's fanned them out. And then he shuffles them and fans them out. And then Boone chooses a card. The Indian chooses a card. The Indian wins. He gets the a queen or whatever he high card so boone gives him 240 dollars and it's like all right see you later we're gonna pass on through and as the indian starts to get on his horse to go away Mm -hmm. um boone kills him and the other guys that he's with wow and then goes and gets his money and they mosey on yeah he didn't have him for dinner well no so after okay so this story says that they were actually attacked by Indians. So we're going to go with this. This is the Wikipedia version. And also this um, Legends page that actually there's other stories on there like about Ruby, Arizona and stuff. Right. But anyway, so I'm going to just go with they were attacked by Indians. And that forces him and the six men to run into the wilderness, which takes them off their path. Okay. And so... Now it, they're in the freezing cold, and they're off their paths, so they're kind of like wandering around, finding their way. But it's, you know, I, I'm imagining it was snowing because they talk about how cold it was. Um, short in pro- provisions, they, yeah, they were cold and hungry, as well as um, not in their surroundings, so they were just kind of lost. Their horses were worn out, <clears throat> so they're, I think... Um, it made it sound like their their horses were getting thin and hungry and they just couldn't go on any longer. So they kill their horses and they have the horses for dinner. Okay. And then they use like the hide or whatever to for for shoes that um, for snowshoes. They use the hide. Wow. Yeah. And then the journey was hard and treacherous and they were now down to two men because which is because got hungry boot well not yet boone and a man named burton that's it because the other guys basically couldn't make it they just kind of starved to death they were froze to death or mm-hmm. they couldn't make it in the elements and likely they, story yeah okay. well oh don't you worry <laughs> um because of their the others were left to die in the elements they left their companions behind in the mountains yeah okay almost to fort hall so they're not even that far it sounds like burton could no longer go on because now he's getting weak and and he he's just like can't do it Mm -hmm. boone left him he's like all right buddy you stay here i'm gonna go ahead and then it's weird he actually had a conscience yeah he turns around later and he's coming back for Burton. And as he's coming back, he hears the gunshot. Burton shot himself, killed okay. himself, put himself out of his misery. I mean, he was going to die. So. Right. So anyway, Boone was hungry. Okay. <laughs> 
So And he already has a penchant for Yeah, so he took he had a leg. <laughs> I'm a leg person as well. He had a drumstick. And then um he took a, the Burton's other leg and wrapped it up in like a shirt or something and took it for the road. To for, go. You know, yeah, doggy bag. Carry out. Little doggy bag. I was I, I was kind of interested in that he only took a leg. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, they're pretty heavy. Yeah, maybe that's all he could carry. <laughs> he did just shove one whole leg in his mouth. I mean, he feasted. <laughs> so he likes drumsticks. Boone was finally discovered. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me make sure. Yeah, okay. He was finally discovered at, oh, this makes it sound like, oh, he got caught, but whatever. Okay, so he's at an Indian camp. And somebody finds him there and is like, you need some help, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> Not knowing what they're asking for. Right. He's like, yeah, I could use some, you know. Nutrition? He needs, yeah. He needs, he needs mm, you look yummy. <laughs> Here. <laughs> you smell all right. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm assuming, you know, he needed somebody to show him the way and this guy could. So the guy's like. You need some help? And he's like, yep. So this guy kind of gets him to where he needs to go. And he, like, gives him food and gives him clothes and transportation all the way to Salt Lake City. And Boone has over $1,400 in his pocket and in coins, I'm sorry, Mm -hmm. $14 in coins. They said he didn't offer him a dime and didn't even say thank you. Nothing. No gratitude was given wow. to this guy. I would say the gratitude was not killing him and eating him. Oh, uh. <laughs> yeah. I guess you could put it that way. I mean. Okay. So, of course, uh, Boone, wanted by the law, once again, is fled. <laughs> He finally gets to where he needs to go. Right. And now he has to flee to San Francisco. So now he's going back down to San Francisco, California. Well, in California, Boone kills a rancher. No surprise. Hmm. He must have needed to, like, he was probably jonesing. Like, I gotta kill somebody. Right. (laughs) I'm hungry. I got the munchies. All right. So this rancher, like, really befriended him. And he befriended the rancher and you know he like i said he's charming he's really good at like making people think he's a good old man this guy also took care of him giving him shelter and food and whatever but whatever so um i'd say what a jerk but i mean we've already established that yeah this guy was protecting him from like the vengeance of the law so this guy actually knew he was protecting a bad guy but he was being a good old boy you know he is now traveling to oregon oregon Robbing people and for a living, he's robbing people and frequently murdering murdering them and munching on them as well. <laughs> you know. Do they tell you like how many people he actually cannibalized? No. No. Um, there was one thing I read and it was like 11 people with this and 11 people with that. But right. it wasn't, I'm like, it wasn't. Definitive. No, okay. I didn't trust it. So. Um, in 1862, it, it sounds like a majority of his people, though, that he would eat, to be honest. Ugh. It's really gross. But in 1862, a um, very drunk Levi Boone gunned down an unnamed man. Oh, I'm sorry. An unarmed man. Can't read my own writing. <laughs> I was writing a lot. <laughs> anyway, an unarmed man. So, you know, even back then, like to shoot an unarmed man was that's like a big sin right you know that was like wow what a chicken shit who would do to shoot a man in the back or unarmed was like chicken shit right anyway this guy's name dutch fred dutch fred dutch fred he shot him in a saloon that's kind of not a surprise (laughs) anyway and then he fled again he fled after shooting fred poor dead fred (laughs) Dutch Fred, dead Dutch Fred. <laughs> anyway, while on the run, he uh, he had the munchies again for more flesh, and I guess he chow- chowed down another fugitive. <laughs> it's a bad guy. It's okay. <laughs> um, another guy that was helping him, though, you know, like accompanying him right. somewhere. So it's like so he just has no qualms. Like it doesn't matter. He has no conscience. He doesn't. Yeah. Nothing. Nope. 
It's all about him. Right. Narcissus and his city. Ap- and his appetite. Yeah. Well, yeah. He's already <sighs> developed an appetite I wonder appetite what for humans flesh. taste like. Do we taste like chicken? I heard we're not too far from pork. Oh, you, you heard that, did you? I heard that. <laughs> I heard that researching a story. <laughs> no. Did you talk to this guy? No. <laughs> we taste right. like pork. Mm. So the next time you have pork? No. It kind of does remind me of that, though. The, we're the other white meat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> um, okay. So we're coming to the end, I believe. So he is captured by the law. So he... Boone, it says Boone begged, begged, begged on. Did I, I think I, I think I must have been drunk when I was writing. (laughs) Begged on of his, no. Okay, so basically one of his 12 siblings came to help him. His brother, Old Tex. Old Hex or Old Tex? Old Tex. Oh my God. Old Tex came. Are you serious? Which is one of Boone's 12 siblings. Like Old Yeller. Yep. (laughs) Old Tex. Oh my gosh. I hope he doesn't die. Like old I don't tex. know the story. <laughs> old Tex, don't die. With a considerable considerable amount of money. Oh, that's right. So old Tex goes around. So there's there's witnesses to these this most recent killing. Okay. And, or killings. And so old Tex goes around and pays off all the witnesses. You've seen nothing. Go away. Here's some money. Damn. Okay. Yeah, they had the money. So I guess so they all went away. Well, like I said, he came from. It made it sound like his family was. I mean, kind of. You're not life. living in a cabin if you can ride a horse into your house. I'm right, right. <laughs> so I mean, it's, they're not poor. So anyway, um, yeah, because there were no witnesses, of course, they released him, and then he accompanied his brother, old Tex. Where do you accompany him? <laughs> I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> oh. Oh, I don't know. It sounds like they just... Right off into the sunset. Yeah, I mean, because then it says Boone was reported to reappear at many of the settlements. So I think he was supposed to go back with old Tex, but then he just kind of like starts pe- peeking out in other little area settlements. Mm-hmm. And wait a minute. My... Okay, to reappear at many of the settlements mentioned before. Oh, he was re he like he was going back to the old places. Okay, so he's re- reappearing at the, his old hangouts basically, uh, okay. and then he was killing people again, killing more people in those settlements, and in the process, he was finally apprehended in Montana. Wow. Yeah, so like it sounds like because he was in San Francisco, so he kind of like backtracked, right? And then he was going back up through like Oregon and stuff Mm -hmm. and hitting those places. Idaho. Yeah, yeah. Hitting Idaho and Utah. And through that, he was hitting his old hangouts and killing people and they finally got him. But not until he was in Montana. So after teaming up with Henry Plummer, another outlaw, Mm-hmm. That sounds like we could do a story on him too, because he sounds like a pretty bad guy. I guess I don't know. Um, and his gang, gang, Boone and four other gang members were captured, arrested, and and tried in secret. So I'm assuming they did it in secret so that they couldn't like get like what he's done in the past is right. get rid of the witnesses and have his brother or somebody come in or right. try and break out because he's a squirrely guy. So anyway, at the trial, Boone, um, okay, he kisses the Bible and yeah, because you know how they make you put your hand on it, tell the mm-hmm. truth, the whole truth? He kisses it and then proceeds to like perjure the shit out of himself because right. I mean, he's a disrespectful little fuck. So anyway, accusing three finger, three figure, three finger Jack Gallagher, Gallagher, Three um, Finger Jack. Yeah, he's so he has this close friend named Three There's Finger Old Tex and Three Finger yeah, Jack. Th- three th- these finger. are character names. These are I, mean, I meant to tell you names. that like way back then they they all had. I mean even like Doc Holiday or you know what I mean like they all had crazy names. Right. Like even when they were listing like they had a they had a row of all these bad guys and none of them had a normal name. It was all right. nicknames. Right. It was crazy. 
But yeah, so three finger Jack Gallagher. Gallagher. Where's his other two fingers? <laughs> <laughs> Probably got shot off. <laughs> um, his close friend and fellow gang member. He 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 blamed all the crime crimes on him. So yeah, he has like no morals whatsoever. Sounds and like it. No loyalty to anybody. Um, he so everything he committed he blames on him. In 1864, in front of thousands, like they said, six thousand people, he was um finally hung. Um, Gallagher first, Gallagher and the other members were hung, and it, and everybody he, he was hung in Virginia City, Montana. Um, it's set up on seeing his friend Gallagher hang, 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 hung. <laughs> He said, kick away, old fella. (laughs) (laughs) My turn next. I'll be in hell with you in a minute. That's what he said. All righty then. Okay, then he got on the, um, it's his turn. So you know how they stand him on the box and they're getting ready to hang him, right? Right. So the the executioner approaches him slowly, I'm sure, and very cautiously, even though he's going to hang him. Right. And then um, supposedly, this is what he said. Every man, the the sweat boom says, he says, every man for his principles. Uh, hurrah for Jeff Davis. Don't know who that is. He was nowhere in my stories, so I don't know who that is. And it's a very normal sounding name. Mm-hmm. Who the hell is Jeff Davis? I don't know. It, like, he's just so bizarre. I'm going to look. have to look it up and see who it is. <laughs> so every man for his principles. Hurrah, hurrah for Jeff Davis. Let her rip. And then he jumped off the hangman's box. He didn't let them kick it. He jumped off. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then basically hung himself. He was buried in Boot Hill Cemetery in Virginia City, Montana. Does everybody have a Boot Hill Cemetery? <laughs> like... I don't know. <laughs> was that a good story? Or... Yes. I liked it. I thought it was very crazy. Narcissist. Pig. Ugh. Did you find him? I'm going to look him up. I'm going to need a potty break anyway, but I want to know who this guy is. Jeff. Jefferson Davis. Oh, is he talking about the president? Must be. Hurrah for Jeff Davis. Maybe that was like him flinging his finger at him. Right? Interesting. Interesting. Hurrah, Jeff Davis. Wait a minute. There is. No, that's, it's got to be that. Yeah, because that's. Yeah, I bet that's what he was doing. Interesting. Jeff Davis monument. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Okay, now that makes it... I get what he was doing. Wow, he is... Because, I mean, look, he disrespects everybody. So that was his way of giving his finger. And jumping off was his way of like, you're not going to take my life. I'll take my own life. Right. Fuck you. I I really super happy I found this story. Yeah. It was a little different. It's crazy. Twists and turns. He ate everybody. (laughs) Just what we like to dive into. I'm still, I'm, I'm really proud of myself. Thank you. You did good. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everybody. That's a good story. Anyway, right. look at me tooting my own horn. All right. That was a really good story. Really thank good you. story. I was pretty impressed with myself. <laughs> <laughs> In case you couldn't tell. All righty. All right, girl. I'm always impressed with the ones you pull up, so. Well, I mean, mine's not, like, super, super, like, freaky or scary, but mm-hmm. it's, uh, one I wanted to do for a while uh-huh. um, on the Alaskan Triangle. Oh, that's right. Yes. And I kind of came across it when I was actually a couple of times. We did another story um, on Alaska a while, while back. Uh-huh. And then I think when I did that uh, serial killer, the one in Alaska. <laughs> like which one? <laughs> the one that was in Alaska with the plane. Oh, yeah, 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 I forgot yeah. what his name mm-hmm. was. But anyways, uh, this came up on that. And it also came up when I did um, D.B. Cooper. Ooh. So anyways, You're like supposed bits to and pieces. This. Yeah, mm-hmm. so bits and pieces. So I've wanted to do it. So we covered Skinwalker Ranch a while back on episode 21. Yeah. And this is, this whole area, this is kind of has some of the same phenomenon. Yeah. Like Skinwalker Ranch. 
Oh. So, like, UFO-ish type yeah. thing? Yeah. Some UFO, hmm. some Bigfoot, wow. some, a lot of paranormal stuff. Uh, I didn't get a lot of the paranormal stuff. Mm-hmm. I, I was looking and looking. I just wanted some, like, first-hand accounts. And, but I, I got Paranormal a, but, is things you can't explain that happen. Right. So... I mean, a lot of this is paranormal. Yeah. Also, a Loch Ness type creature. Uh, ooh. Wait, other... I have heard about that happening in Alaska. Out there. Yeah, and just is is this the place where like it's like the Bermuda Triangle where people could go and don't come back? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. have heard of it, and it's a very big. But the area is vast. I think I've heard of, of it from people actually going the the fishermen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, there's a lot going on. A burpee girl. I know. Right away. Right away. <laughs> In this triangular shaped area, people disappear at alarming rate. Over the last 50 years, it is estimated that more than 20,000 Alaskans, travelers, hikers, hunters, and small plane pilots have disappeared without explanation. Interesting. With a missing person rate at more than twice the national average. What? Yeah. Come on. I mean, even the... Bermuda Triangle. Did you guys do one on that? No, we haven't. Ooh, we're going to have to no. do... Maybe we could do a joint And in doing that. this, like, Bermuda's one of the ones that I wanted to do, but in doing this, I've realized that there's a lot... There's a few other triangle situations in the United States itself. Okay, is it some kind of a vortex yes. that sucks people well, in? that's kind theory. of thing. And yeah. we'll get to that. Okay. Because you know they just discovered... Sorry. They just discovered another one. Where? I don't know the details, but you know, Zach, Aiden's friend that stays with me, he um, was telling me about it, like him and his family, We, him and I were just discussing something and then, oh, I can't remember what we were talking about, but it ended up coming up in this, excuse me, conversation that they were having about, oh, because I had just told him about Vortex. It's like, you don't have to go to Sedona to enjoy that <laughs> feeling there's for especially like arizona new mexico even california there's vortexes everywhere right and so he then he was like you know they just discovered something it was like it's like a like the law of the gravity right doesn't exist so it's like a vortex kind of thing Uh where it's defying gravity and it's just this one area and things are just it's a phenomenon 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 Phenomenon. 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 Anyway, sorry about that. No, but no, yeah. no, no. Okay, so I think they're discovering so they're, them all the time. Yeah, and like I agree with that. that there's mm-hmm. like you can there's vortices vortices everywhere. Mm-hmm. Like especially like in uh, Sedona that we have here. Mm-hmm. But there's these very powerful ones. Yes. That like this one or the Bermuda Triangle that people seem to just disappear out of nowhere. I think they're like black hole type things that yeah. people are getting sucked in, sucked into. Well, them. and I was actually Why watching something that on the Bermuda Triangle where this guy this pilot he's flying his plane Mm -hmm. he goes through a wormhole like he knows he's in a wormhole and the flight took like 30 three minutes Mm -hmm. he in it i think it's supposed to be like a 30 minute flight Mm -hmm. it took him three minutes to get to where he needed to go what but he real he knew he went into this wormhole his Mm -hmm. like devices started going weird and then three minutes passed and he's like where he needs to be. He just like popped through. So it's like almost like a... A portal. A portal through time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So... But why wouldn't there be? Yeah. Especially with like things going on with our ozone layer. So you know more things are going to probably start opening up or happening because the environment's being messed with, right? Like going haywire. Uh, that's what I would think. Or, I mean, how many of these things have been like, around for like mm-hmm. hundreds of years? Like yeah. thousands of years? I wonder if uh, Earnhardt's probably, like, still in her 20s. Oh. <laughs> Amelia Earnhardt? Uh-huh. All right. I'm sorry. Um. So, what did I say? I said, oh, okay. I don't know, but if you hear things, they're not EVPs when you're reviewing all this. It's it's my throat. <laughs> we just had homemade fajitas, just to let you know. Delicious meat. From what the meat truck she was talking about, yeah. right? Yeah, I think, I don't think I recorded that portion of our conversation. Did you hear that? Yeah. That was a loud one. (laughs) (laughs) If I knew how to burp, it would probably come out really loud. (laughs) 
All right, so like right, I was I'm saying, sorry. in this triangular-shaped area in Alaska, people disappear at alarming rate. Over the last 50 years, it is estimated that more than 20,000... Okay, I already read that part. Oh, sorry. Okay, so the Alaska Triangle goes from the northern town of Utkavik. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Due south to Anchorage, and then southeast to the capital in Juneau. So it's like... Well, that's interesting. It's, yeah, it's a pretty big triangle. If you, but it's like right in their common areas, it sounds like. Yeah. Well, I mean, the center of the triangle is actually like there. it's a lot of wilderness. So oh, it's a lot of so people now. aren't flying over it often or what? They fly through it. That's where the problem is. Well, that's what I mean. Like it's in a common flight pattern, I should right. say. Like if they're going from Juneau to... Well, and there's Wait, one... Wait, is that place part of Russia? That Ukrik or whatever no, you were saying? No, that's in, Mag- in it is, Alaska. It is Alaska. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. 500 to a few thousand people go missing in Alaska every year. More than twice the national average. Uh, What makes this more strange is that Alaska only has a population of about 740,000 people. Wow. The Alaskan Triangle first received widespread attention when U.S. House Majority Leader Hale Boggs' airplane vanished somewhere between Anchorage and Juneau in 1972. (laughs) Boss Hogs. Boss Hogs. Hale Boggs. (laughs) Uh, the disappearance triggered one of the country's largest ever search and rescue operations involving 40 military aircraft, 50 civilian planes, and 39 days of searching an area of 32,000 wow. miles. All in wilderness? Yeah. That's crazy. And the search came up empty on all counts. No wreckage, no debris, no human remains, nothing. That's insane. And and then in, in that wilderness, there's so many... It's a, such a large population of bears. Right. Yeah, there's so many, like... Like, just to search it is lions, dangerous. bears, wolves, mm-hmm. like, oh my. you name it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Um. Oh, and you can't click your heels to get out of there. Uh-uh. It says, after this incident, Congress passed a law mandating the installation of emergency locator transmitters in all civilian aircraft, which is... Is that where the I black think- box? Right, yeah, mm-hmm. where I think I ran into this on D.B. Cooper. Uh, Prior to this in 1950, the Douglas, a C-54 Skymaster, disappeared en route from Alaska to Montana with 44 people on board. So completely disappeared. What? Nobody was All ever the found. people? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Despite one of the largest rescue efforts carried out by the U.S. military, no trace of the aircraft has ever been found. It's considered one of the largest groups of American military personnel to ever go missing. Oh, wow. Um, What do you tell the family? I know. That's so crazy. So another was also a 1990 Cessna, a Cessna 340 also disappeared along with its pilot and four passengers. And these are just a handful the biggest ones. Mostly it's just like small one. Yeah, because that's what they fly a lot of is those little um, Cessnas. Right. That's what they usually fly. So like I said, the 1972 disappearance of Hale Boggs plane um, is what really drew attention to the area. Mm-hmm. In 1986, there was an incident involving a Japanese Boeing 747 what? 200F cargo aircraft that was en route to Paris to Narita International Airport near Tokyo. So, like, That's, it's a flight pattern. Wow. You, uh, no, you'd think that they would avoid that, though. Well, this this one didn't disappear, though. Oh. This is what is interesting. Oh. So, while they are flying through the Reykjavik, through the Reykjavik to Anchorage section of the flight over eastern Alaska, the crew witnessed two unidentified objects what? to their left. These abruptly rose from below and closed to escort their aircraft. Each had two rectangular arrays of what appeared to be glowing nozzles or thrusters, though their bodies remained obscured by darkness. When closest, the aircraft's cabin was lit up and the cabin could feel their heat on his face. This is well-documented what? case. This isn't something, this is like a well-documented case. These two aircraft departed before, oh, so the captain could feel the heat on his face from the aircraft. He's in through his the, aircraft. Yeah. But he can feel from the other aircraft the heat coming through yeah. their aircraft. Yeah. That's bizarre. Yeah. What's the heat coming from? The, their engines? Something. That's crazy. 
These two <clears throat> craft departed before a third, much larger disc appear disc shaped object started to tr- started trailing them. Anchorage Air Traffic Control obliged and requested an oncoming United Airlines flight to confirm the unidentified traffic, but when it and military craft sighted JAL sixteen twenty eight at about seventeen that's the the name of the Japanese mm-hmm. craft. Uh, at about 1751, no other craft could be distinguished. Okay, so, so hold on. So there was nothing else in that airspace. Sidebar for a second. They're saying it's a disc shape. And like when we did that one, weren't weren't most of them like um, triangular shape? Well, back they, in the day, they were more disc shape. Well, I think there's two different mm-hmm. kinds of craft. Mm-hmm. I think the triangle shape, you're, like the one we had here yeah. in Fe- the Phoenix Lights. And then there's the more round and, one that's like got the dome. Right. You know, that's interesting. Right. And then the airspace thing, um, they've mentioned that in our previous stories that we've done that they don't, their technology is so beyond that us that it doesn't pick, pick show up, up on our flight. Sorry. Just no, no, it's crazy. That. So the sighting itself lasted 15 minutes and ended in the vis- vicinity of Mount Denali. Hmm. Uh, at, at least the first two objects were observed by all the crew members, Captain Kenju Teruchi, an ex-fighter pilot with more than 10,000 hours of flight experience in the cockpit's left-hand seat, co-pilot Takanori Tamafuji in the right-hand seat, and flight engineer Yoshio Tsukuba. Uh, in fact, Alaska itself is one of the top five states with the most UFO sightings. Wow. So. I'm sure we're on that list then. No, we weren't. What? No, I, I looked it up. New Mexico? New Mexico was one of them. Yeah. We weren't. I'm Isn't surprised that, that we're not. Yeah. Because maybe that le- list needs to be updated. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I mean, what does it say if that list is like current and we have as many UFO sightings as we have here about Alaska being one of the top five? Yeah. That's crazy. Um, it's easy easy to write off the disappearances as people getting lost and quickly succumbing to the elements, but the numbers seem too staggering for such an easy answer. One potential reason for the disappearing planes is that the treacherous mountain terrain swallows them up, but this couldn't have happened in every instance and doesn't explain the hundreds upon hundreds of people that have not been pl- flying planes. Um, so let's talk about the cryptids, starting with the Bigfoot type. Can you hear me? Yeah. So this one's known as Hairy Man. Can you hear you? (laughs) I can hear me now. I can hear you now. Can you hear you now? I can hear me now. Um, This one's known as Hairy Man or Urali. It is said to stand six feet, six to ten feet tall, which is, Mm. I mean, on the Bigfoot episode that we did, I think that's pretty much average for Bigfoot. Um, and is covered with shaggy coarse hair or fur approximately two to four inches long. What I didn't come across when I was researching this and in researching this, mm-hmm. I've been watching uh, the Alaskan Triangle, which is on the History Channel. Oh, they it, actually have a, like, is it a series? It's a series, but they have it <clears throat> for free mm. on um, YouTube. So oh. if anybody wants to watch that, it, I thought it was pretty interesting. Yeah, definitely. Um, and it's kind of almost set up like the ghost hunters thing where mm. they go out on these, but they like give a lot of interesting information about each item. Yeah. I've noticed that with the National Geographic, they do that with their explorations where they try and make it, they make it look like, but you do get some good information. Yeah. But then I read a bunch of articles too. So yeah, just kind of piecing everything together. But when I was watching that and reading the articles, so what I came across when I was doing the Bigfoot stuff is what preceded a Bigfoot is either like them like knocking on trees or whatever, mm. but also there was like a stench. Oh, there really? There was like a really nasty stench mm-hmm. and that's how somehow you know that they're around. Mm. So I didn't come across that in this, but who said I didn't read everything. So what it could exactly be. is a Bigfoot? Like, what do you think it is? I don't know. Like, what do you think this thing is that they're talking about? Is it a man? Is it part man, part something else? Something Is it like a caveman that never... Yeah. I have no idea. But there's a lot of sightings. A oh. lot of sightings. Interesting. Scary. Very scary. Well, why are we afraid? Do, has it attacked people or eaten people? No, it seems to they like want to stay away from people. Even Bigfoot sightings, right. like they they never say but like have, somebody was killed by one. No, 
No, I don't think I've run into anything like no. that. It's always like we saw one. They but... do make a lot of, like when they're trying to scare you away, mm-hmm. they'll make a lot of noise. They'll throw mm-hmm. rocks. They'll, yeah, I'm talking about the Bigfoot itself. Yeah. 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 So I don't know about this. Huh. I'm gonna, I, I, I guess I've never cared enough to re- research it because I just kind of always thought, eh. But maybe, uh, maybe we might look into that. Out of all the cryptids that are out there, <clears throat> like Bigfoot is like the most tangible to me because it seems like there's sightings not just in america there's north america like there's sightings everywhere yeah like even in europe yeah i just think it's like it's a misunderstood something and they've gotten castings of like footprints yes yeah interesting okay i'm sorry it's all right so it lives in the (laughs) wide tundra areas (laughs) near lake uh iliamna it also said to be very fast and has often been seen at night. It's also a very fast swimmer. Oh, it swims. It swims. What? This one swims. Burpee. Oh, my gosh. So. Land and water. It stands upright like a man. That's insane. Okay, so then there are many stories and have been many sightings. In 1982, in the city of Dillingham, uh, a hunting guide showed a picture that he had taken of the Urali, Ura Yuli, I think that's it, standing on a mountain ridge. It had a, an approximate height of 10 feet and a weight of around 750 pounds. What? That's so, huge. Yeah. I don't know how they came to that conclusion. Yeah, because they're just seeing it from far away, right? Yeah, but I would get, mm, this was a guesstimate, I'm saying. Mm-hmm. And, lo- of course, I had the long reddish-brown fur. In July of 1999, along the banks of Kisserlik River in Alaska, a group was able to take a photo of a pair of huge wedge-shaped footprints that they had noticed in the mud. The footprints were estimated to be about 12 to 14 inches long. Whoa! And three inches deep and were approximated to be at least six feet apart. So, what? I mean, imagine the gate on that thing. Like, how tall would it have to be for that That's that why gate? it can, like, probably run and swim so fast. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like the zombies. Like, when you're watching zombie yeah. movies, the zombies that run. Mm-mm. Yeah. Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Something completely different. But <laughs> Okay. So, there's another cryptid out there mm-hmm. that there are many accounts of. I didn't write this correctly. It's known as the Kushtaka. Um, it's spoken of in the folklore of the Tlingit and the Tish... Tish I'm sorry. I'm going to fuck this up. <laughs> Tsimchian people, which roughly translates to land otter man. The legend is that the creature appears to travelers in an irresistible form, such as a relative or a vulnerable child, to lure the victims to nearby river where it tears them to shreds or turns them into what? another kushtaka. Sounds very reminiscent of the silkies or the selkies of the Irish and Scottish mythology. Huh. Except I don't know that they tore them up. They just took them into the water. What? Yeah. Ooh, I wonder if that's what happens. Remember I was doing the story um, that CJ Faison was going into the cabin, and then he stayed at that one where his friend, Sonny, was, like, staring at the window. He was kind of, oh, like, yeah, taking the water. And, and that took him out to the water. Out. And a bunch of people have been um, missing and then found floating in the water mm. and i wonder if it's something like that that lures them out That's into scary. the water yeah maybe it is something like that i mean we who knows we, we like could be we're still st- finding stuff we're still maybe us doing all these stories we're starting discovering. to put pieces together yeah could be we could we could be great detectives right now <laughs> <laughs> the drink and uh, eat and eat belch and fart belch and fart <laughs> Drink, eat, belch, and fart. During their podcast. (laughs) That's what we do. And blame it on the dog. All right. So the gorgeous glaciers of Alaska may look to be solid ice, but the glaciers are actually honeycombed with hidden chambers, and those crevices can be larger than houses. What? Or even office buildings coupled with falling snow of the northern climate. So I've never heard about any of this in my whole life. Yeah, Alaska is just the last frontier. There's just it's insane. So that could be an explanation about how people get lost out there, like people going yeah and exploring this stuff, not just getting eaten by bears. So then there are the supposed sightings of devil monkeys. Wait, I've heard of devil monkeys. Have you? Yeah, where it could have been something I was watching, but I I have heard that name. So, um, they have a name. They're they're linking them to 
a legend of the natives around that area. Mm. They're called the Katani, which are said to have lived in caves and enemies of and were enemies of humans. In modern times, there have been accounts of pe- people being terrorized by them and claims of being hunted by these creatures. Mm. They have dog-like face and a primate body. So, um, I did watch a couple of counts on the Alaskan Triangle show where these people were like, okay, one of the guys was like they surrounded me they basically hunted him he ended up they set a trap for him Mm. he ends up back in his car and they like literally jumped on his hood and then when he turned on the the car yeah or the truck it scared scared them them off what yeah and then out there by himself yeah a lot of people go hunting or go by themselves camping yeah (laughs) you're all by themselves yeah that's just especially well not when you're hearing all these stories no that's the thing A man in 2010, while on a camping trip, claims that his brother was attacked by a monkey-like creature that jumped out of the trees. They both fought it off. I think he hits it over the head with a pan Mm. pan or something. But it left his shirt ripped and three bloody scratch marks down his back. And they're said to only have like three three fingers. Yeah. Unlike other primates. Weird. Yeah. Almost kind of like a sloth. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. I was trying to picture it. faster. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I wonder what the, if they have like fangs or what their teeth are like. Right. And then, oh, well, they're supposed to have like a dog-like face. Yeah. But so are their teeth like a canine? I have no idea. The picture that they were showing, like yeah. the rendering of it, almost looked like a baboon to me. It looked like a baboon face mm-hmm. more than a dog. Hmm. Then there have been sightings. We were talking about this. Mm-hmm. The actual video of what people are referring to as the Alaskan Loch Ness or Ice Monster. Mm-hmm. A government employee captured a video of a mysterious creature moving its way through the Chena River. It appears to be encrusted in ice, and the rest of its body is hidden in the murky water, moving faster than it should upriver against the current. Did they show it? Yeah. Did you see it? Yeah, I saw a video. It's crazy. Okay, what'd you see it on? I want to pull it up. Hold on just a second. (laughs) I can't wait. What? And it's going upriver. Wait, that's not like a whale? No. It's a river. It's not a... Oh, hell. And you can see it undulating. And this guy said it was... The length of it was long. Like, very... Like, it was... Oh, dang it. I want to see it again. Oh, wait. Oh, it looks like it's swimming, but it's actually stationary and just waiting in the current. Wait, what? Because it looks like it has, like, an arm of some sort right here. Yeah. But he said it's not moving. It's stationary. That's weird. Because this guy said it was coming up river. Like... Because I actually watched the account on the that Alaskan Triangle by the guy that took the footage. Sorry, but I couldn't wait. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm talking about all these cryptids because mm-hmm. they're offered as a possible explanation of why people have gone missing in the Triangle. Well, that thing right there would eat. <laughs> <laughs> eat up people. The thought is that some have been lured to their death by some of the cryptid creatures mentioned here. But there was there's a whole bunch of different uh, legends and lures mm. out there. Of course, there are your run-of-the-mill creatures such as wolves and bears and mountains and lions to contend with as well. But the fact that there have been sightings of the others makes it feel like they are more than just native legends. Another explanation is the terrain, of course. Um, More than half of the country's federally protected wilderness is in Alaska. Oh. So in all of the United States, more than half of it is in Alaska. What? Well, because Alaska's huge. It's huge. I know, but... Do they know what's going on? The feds? Oh, I doubt it. <laughs> they don't even know what's going on. Mm-hmm. What are they feeding those animals to make them what break are, out? What are they feeding them? I don't know. Maybe they're throwing test chemicals or something out there. I know, it could be all the gasoline spills, the, all the oil <laughs> right. spills. Could be. Back to this. Okay, I, read, I already told you about the honeycombs mm-hmm. and all that. So that that's an explanation for why people are disappearing. So these honey- this hidden, the hidden chambers and stuff, because people are exploring things. So they think they're like falling into these things and then just dying. Or like, I mean, you're in this ice cave and it caves in on uh, you. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. Being buried alive or whatever. Or, yeah. Hmm. Another theory is, ener- well, we were just talking about the energy yeah. vortex. Some mm-hmm. believe that Alaska Triangle is located in a vile vortice. In vile vortices, which means that it has extreme electric magnetic uh, anomalies in addition to energy vortexes, which are electromagnetic currents, 
One great example of bile vortices is the Bermuda Triangle. Mm. However, several other places in the planet are also said to have it, such as the Hamakulia Volcano in Hawaii, mm. uh, the Devil's Sea in Japan, and the North and South Poles. Other famous destinations that are said to lie in vortices, vortices are Easter Island, Stonehenge, and the Pyramids of Egypt. Okay, so... And considering they have these alien visitors, Mm -hmm. does that not make you think that maybe all of that's connected? Could be. Because, like, people have their theories about the pyramids. Right. So maybe all of it is connected, that it's all, like, maybe these creatures are something that was, like, created because of the energy that comes from or whatever is being brought from another world that's mixing with this world and creating these weird creatures i mean i'm not gonna rule it out (laughs) no it's crazy okay so sorry i know pyramids of egypt in fact some people believe that the reason why these monuments were built in the first place was because they are located in a vortex that's i never realized that's a drink recipe right there (laughs) (laughs) you know where i got i got it at i think goodwill Mm -hmm. Because I was like, oh, this is a good frame, mm. but it's like painted on. Oh, I thought you guys put that on yourself. No, and they're, they oh. glued it on there. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, so. All right, I, I'm sorry I got distracted. It's okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Say it again. Oh, some believe that the reason that these monuments were built in the first place was because they are located on a vortex. Oh. So, kind of. Kind of like what I was what you were yeah, saying. yeah, yeah. yeah. Energy vortexes are said to cause different effects on people's bodies, such as affecting their mental, physical, and emotional health, as well as causing hallucinations and visions, confusion, confusion and disorientation. In addition, these people have shown signs of healing powers. And sometimes electro, electrical instruments can malfunction, such as compasses, like uh-huh. the airplanes. I know. Well, sidebar, this is what I was explaining to Zach. So even when I go to Tucson or when I drive up to Sedona, um, if my vibration is at a certain level, um, because sometimes I can go and I'm totally fine. Other times, so I, I, I believe it's how, whatever, whatever I'm vibrating at is when I go through certain vortexes, which like the one in Tucson or going up to Sedona, It is, sometimes I have to tell my spirit people (laughs) to like center me, bring me back because I'm going to get in an accident if you don't. Because it's like um, I was describing to him, it's like the road is like moving and getting longer, but I'm staying in one place. Sounds like a wormhole. Yeah, it's the weirdest thing. It's the weirdest thing. But it'll kind of like, yeah, kind of get you like this, like tunnel vision. Yeah, like a wormhole. But a wormhole more... um, Somebody told me that you know when you're in a wormhole. Yeah. And so the way they showed like the way this guy explained it on that thing I was watching on the Bermuda Triangle, you could see it. Was yeah. Like, that's what I was told that too. Swirl. That you will see it. So that's how I know it's like, oh, I just went through a vortex where most people probably don't even realize they're actually going through one unless you're you happen to be at that higher vibration and then your body will probably feel weird or you might get car sick and you usually don't get car sick or, right you know you're like wow all of a sudden i just got sick to my stomach and it's like because you just went through one and your body was adjusting to it interesting yeah really yeah because that's also happened to me and that's up in going to Sedona and in Tucson? It's happened going to Tucson. It's happened going to Sedona. It's happened going to New Mexico. I've had to pull off at a rest area and be like, bring me back. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. But they always bring me back. Like, they help me. So Because you can get in an accident if right. you're like, you know, you're like going to another place. <laughs> that's what it feels like. Where do you like. think you're going? <laughs> I don't know. If It literally feels like like you're going to get hypnotized. Oh, okay. Because, you know, have you, have you ever gotten... Um, like you're zoning out? Yeah. Have you ever gotten hypnotized by just like looking at the lines on the street? Yeah. It's kind of like that. Like you kind of feel yourself like I have to like... Shake ground, your head. You have to ground yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I've gotten that like driving at night, like driving Mexico. Yeah. Actually. Another belief is that vortexes can open doorways to yeah. spiritual world or another realm which could possibly explain why so many people disappear into those regions oh. i mean that is true that is to me that's the purpose of one 
<laughs> opening a doorway. Yeah, to get you from, it's a portal to get you from here to there or to, you know, that would, that makes sense. So that's pretty much my story, I guess. Crazy. That was a good one. That was a good story. Yeah. I like that. It's different. Yeah. There was so m- like many different directions that I could, I was just like, oh, wow, this is a lot. This is a lot. But the most interesting thing to me was realizing that there is play like that Betty and Barney Hill story that yeah, we did. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's in a Vortis. What? Yeah. That's like that. It's in an, uh, an area in that area that's actually known Whoa. as a triangle. Okay. Yeah. Now we're... Uh... See what I mean? Like we we're 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 on to something. <laughs> <laughs> we could be investigators for this. Yeah, shit. and people have disappeared in that area too. I mean, I don't want to go and investigate it cuz I don't want to disappear. <laughs> <laughs> and some of the like when you were doing those um like kind of the folklore, the legends of those right, certain right, right, areas. Right, one. Mm-hmm. One, one of those was in Aquarius. See there? Yeah. Oh, just saying. So, yeah. I just, like you were talking about going down a rabbit hole, I started right. going down the rabbit hole too, so. I was yeah, like, focus, gets, focus, focus. Sometimes it's just fun to go down the rabbit hole. But Alaska is like, it's on my bucket list. Even, oh, my mom, even with all that. My mom, my sisters, my cousin, my mom, my sister, my cousins, aunts, whatever, they all went on a big cruise. Mm-hmm. And they, it was amazing. They had a great time. They yeah, loved it because love you know that. you can, you you have your hotel and everything on the cruise. But then you, they were able to stop and explore Juno and stuff like that and go and, yeah, you could go whale watching and do all those fun things. Yeah, uh, a good friend of mine was supposed to go. I think like this month or next month. Mm-hmm. And they're getting their money refunded because of COVID. Yeah. Listen, my my mom and my sister and them were talking about wanting to go on a cruise in September. And I'm like, are you out of your effing mind? They wanted me to go to Vegas today. I'm like, you are crazy. Oh, because um, then yeah. my, my one sister texted me and she's like, do you even know anybody? Does anybody? I'm on the fence. Like, does anybody? I don't know. I've asked tons of people. Nobody knows anybody who's even had this. And I'm like, um, yeah, we know somebody very close to us who was diagnosed with it. And she was in you know, the hospital. And then she was, you know, as soon as she didn't have to be in ICU, now she's recovering at home. So oh, yes, good. we know somebody who, not to mention like nurses that I know, right? who tell me the stories of people that they treat. And some of them can't even go in, home and see their kids. So I pretty sure they're not lying about it right they'd want to go and see their yeah. children i have my aunt my cousin uh a cousin-in-law that they're all nurses out in new mexico and new mexico's hit hard yeah because that's where a lot of my people yeah, are they're dealing too. with it so yeah so um no this is one of I those things go to just Vegas. like what we're talking about it's like just because you are not personally affected by something does not mean that it is not happening somewhere and that it's mm-hmm. not it's not a problem yeah and Some people have a hard time you know, just coming to terms with something unless it's happened. It's a kind of like I was in a horrific rollover car accident. My car caught on fire. I had Good Samaritan save my life. Then the car exploded into flames. I was in my 20s. I would have never, ever thought anything like that was possible to happen. Right. Who you? It's always, that's not going to happen to me. And now it's part of my story. And when I tell people and I'm like, please wear your seatbelt. You know how many people probably leave and don't put on their seatbelt? Because that's not going to happen to me. It can me happen. Well, and so this virus is, it can happen. So just protect yourself. Just do. Yeah. And, and the people that are like, I'm not going to stop living my life. Or if you're going to get it, you're going to get it. But you can take measures to protect yourself from getting it and spreading it to everybody else right. like i'm high risk i don't want to die yet i have things to do here <laughs> and so i certainly don't want to die from this virus not being able to breathe exactly so, yeah it's i've read some devastating stuff like this lady just had to have a a lung transplant mm. because it like made her lungs into swiss cheese where Ooh. her lungs were pretty much sticking to the, the side walls of her Ugh. like yeah it was bad what about though like the nurse did you see her the nurse that you know she dedicated her life to helping these people and then she ends up with it 
you see her, she has two sons and they'd even get to say goodbye to their mom. And she, she documented her whole, her whole journey. And then she ended up dying. Yeah, but it's very sad and it is very real. So, you know, it's fine if you want to go and live your life and stuff, but then at least protect us from it by like wear a mask. Right. Just yeah. because yeah. something is not affecting you does not mean it is not real. Right. Whether it's COVID, whether it's racism. Correct. <laughs> The, the the best thing you can do is educate yourself. Educate yourself. Like, and I don't mean <laughs> read Facebook. I mean, no. like, really go and open documents up and read and, the and, CDC and, and things like that. And when somebody's telling you about their experiences, don't discount their experiences mm-hmm. by saying, well, no, that's not real. Right. <laughs> right. Or defending, you know, as much as I defend police officers because i am supportive of police officers i also support black people and their rights and i have seen the injustice that happens to them so i will never just i can't i'm white you don't know you acknowledge the fact that there's problems yes there are problems serious problems right so just because i i support the ones i love doesn't mean that i'm supporting police officers being bad and hurting people right. and doing wrong uh, I don't know I just got a skunky smell <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me <laughs> it wasn't me anyway yeah. that's I, I just think I think we're really starting to lose which is a part of our problem also in this world is that we're really losing this what you and I are doing right, right. Now. interaction yeah the I'm eye to down, eye having a beer and like having a conversation with people yeah. but I think Not a lot has changed in the fact that before Facebook or social media, Mm -hmm. people had polite dinners with their friends and you never really even knew who they voted for. You never really even knew all the thoughts processes that were going on in their head. And now that you have social media, you know a whole lot fucking more than you ever wanted to fucking know. So, I mean, I know people probably know more about me in the past few weeks and they ever knew <laughs> you don't know shit about me because i don't get on my social media so. i did just post a picture of me and my niece on instagram <laughs> i'm horrible about even getting on my yeah i'm, my I'm regular business instagram. page yeah although i have to say um i did start to put something on the governor <laughs> Ducey, Doug Ducey. Yeah, I don't call him the that. Deuce. I don't call him that either. Number two. I don't call him that either. <laughs> <laughs> I call him Douche. Douche. Anyway, douche. Douche. <laughs> anyway, I started to tweet something out because his news conference yesterday was. I'm not joking. This is not exaggeration. I'm not putting words in the mouth of him of his mouth. I'm not. I swear to you, this is what he did. He's sitting there telling everybody that the media is not telling the truth, that it's gotten exaggerated, that the numbers in Arizona have not gone up. And then the media starts asking questions. And all of a sudden he's like, well, uh, I'm going to let her answer that. Points to the doctor. Mm -hmm. She says, well, yes, the numbers have gone up. And and she's explaining. Well, then they're like, but... Duche, you said, and he's like, well, no, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, the, the numbers have gone up. They, they have gone up. Um, and then he's like totally backtracking <laughs> what, yeah. So I started to text like, um, dumbass, which is, you know, like you can't say right there. And then two minutes later, backtrack your words and like, and you can't do that. Right. And so anyway, I started to kind of, and then I had to take it off because I just, I, I'm, I can't be that person. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. So I didn't do it. I'm sure he had plenty of people pointing it out. Mm-hmm. I'm sure he did. Yeah. I, ca- I can't watch his news conferences. I get too, too frustrated. But I did just wanted to, I saw that part and then I started to walk away and then I came back and now he's saying, and I'm like, you just said, you can't do that. It's just, you can't do that. It's wrong. Right. But they don't care. Right and wrong. My truth, your truth, whatever. Right. (laughs) 
<laughs> All right, I'm done. Get off my soup soap soup box. Soup box. <laughs> we don't get on soap boxes. We get no. on soup boxes because no. we're hungry. I know. I have a hard time <laughs> being mean, and so I can't be mean on social media either. You can't. No. I can get mean. I think it's that. I Gemini. get mean if you fuck with my kids. Then I'm mean. But other I than think that, it's that Gemini switch. Like I can be the nicest person in the world, but mm. I can get triggers on. me. <laughs> I can I can smack someone in the face with being kind and they don't realize they just got smacked in the face until they like walk away and go, wait, what the fuck just happened? Right. I can do that. But I, I just don't see a sense. One of my client <laughs> one of my client friends came to see me and and I was telling her about my day and how like I I don't know, it was butterfingers, things just like this happened and that happened and um but Zach Got out of the car and spilled his whole Powerade on, in my front seat. Oh, man. <laughs> and then we get uh, in the house and I'm putting, because we got Barros, that delicious Ooh. salad and the pizza. And I was going to put, I was so excited. I love their, their ranch dressing for some reason. So I had like three things of full ranch dressings, going to put them in the fridge. And they all fell and spilled everywhere. <gasps> And Zach's like, oh, my gosh. I'm like, ah, well, you know, cleaning them up. And she's like, how are you just so like, oh, well. Like, even telling me the story, you're like, he spilled a Powerade in my car. Ha, 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 ha. Like, well, because it, when it happens, now it's in the past. So what are you going to do? Right. Throw fit, cry, get pissed. I mean, that's not going to clean it up and get it. Right. You know, no. I'm just going to be like that fucking sucks and then clean it up <laughs> and so she was just like how are you not and like when my ac broke and then you know i had my ac break my washer break like she will always say like how are you not freaking out i'm like just the universe will fix it she's like <laughs> she can't figure it out but it's like it, when you get yourself all freaked out about stuff that's not gonna that just makes you feel worse right that doesn't take care of a problem that's true so I just, whatever, it's going to, it's not that I'm like, oh, blase, like nothing ever bothers me. Trust right. me, things bother me. But I mean, sometimes you just got to be like, don't, don't sweat the small and sometimes don't sweat the big stuff either. Cause you can't, if you can't fix it right then and there, Check it's going to be okay with it. it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And you know what my thing is, is then just like before you go to bed, eat a bunch of chocolate stress eat some chocolate and wake up with pimples. chocolate on my face <laughs> one time i woke up and the kids are like mom were you eating in your sleep and i'm like no so now no. this is what i'm gonna imagine when you've had a stressful day and we've talked on the phone that you've gone to bed and you're like mm, 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 mm. <laughs> I had M&M's and they melted in my hand while I was sleeping. And then I must have touched my face while I was sleeping. And so I had a streak of chocolate going down my face. I had no idea when I woke up. So the kids are like, Mom, what were you doing last night? What? You know what they say about chocolate and sucks. Yeah, well... <laughs> Let's just say I have a whole lot of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> All oh right. My God. I'm I'm done well, with I, mine. I think I think that's our show tonight. I'm done. You're done? I'm done. It was fun though. You know, it was fun. We got off our soup box. <laughs> yeah, I mean we weren't too bad, were no, we? No, we didn't get too preachy. I hope not. I hope not. But you know what? That's just who we are. <laughs> Roll with it. It is what it is. We definitely loosen up. All right, guys. I hope you like the stories that we gave you tonight. If you guys have any suggestions, feel free to email us anytime Send at tipsytalespodcast at yahoo.com. It's getting late. <laughs> we're not yeah. even drunk. No, we're not at all. We're like sober stone sober stone cold sober. i don't stone cold sober you've barely did you drink that whole thing almost but like i had my whole thing and i i got a little buzz like halfway through and then it just i guess because i drank it really I think slow we ate and we ate yeah but yeah there's like this much left Alrighty, guys no about this much left. no about 
this much left. Maybe this much. <laughs> Just kidding. Did we say what we were drinking? I think we did. Yeah, we did. Okay. At the beginning. Okay, right. kids. Well, you know. That's all we got. That's all we got. Have a good night. All right. Behave. All right, y'all. Have a good time now. You here? <laughs> Let's put that at the end of our <laughs> of our podcast. <laughs> all <the> time. <laughs> y'all come back now. You here? Y'all come back now. You here? All right. Have a good night. Good night. I'm Alma. I'm Carlene. See ya. Peace out.